A long time ago, in a forest, there was a rabbit that was cool and lively. He was wandering the forest all day, proud of himself, showed off arrogantly. I'm the fastest in the forest. No one can beat me. <laughs> Then a skater. Then a skateboard. Then a bicycle. He could even run faster than a car. One day, a turtle asked bravely to the rabbit who is proud of his fast running. Are you ready to compete with me? But the rabbit laughed at him, thinking it was funny. <laughs> the turtle frowned and said, I'm serious. The rabbit confidently replied, Sure, I can be you anyway. Don't be nervous. When the day of the race came, all the animals gathered. Both the turtle and the rabbit were ready and excited. While they were talking among themselves about which one would win, the little bear rang the bell. And the race started. The rabbit left a pile of dust with his fast running. The leaves were blowing up, it looked like storming. The turtle, however, was far behind him, trying to catch up with him with the small steps he was taking. The rabbit stopped and looked back confidently. The turtle still had a long time to catch up with him apparently, because the rabbit thought he would win this race anyway. Under a tree near the finish line, he fell asleep joyfully. Oh, I can win the race three times till the turtle arrives. Oh. However, the turtle continued the race with slow steps carefully. As he approached the finish line, he saw the rabbit sleeping. Even though he was very surprised, he walked at the same pace patiently. Because he wanted to win this race so badly. After a while, the rabbit opened his eyes yawning. <sighs> Looked around and couldn't believe what he was seeing. Because the turtle was about to finish the race. With one last effort, the rabbit was running and running. But the turtle crossed the line before him, and he won the race as he was wishing. Yay! Yay! Hey, Bravo! Bravo! In the end, the one who won the race was the one racing carefully and consistently. The turtle took his cup and held it up proudly. While all the animals were clapping wildly, he congratulated the rabbit who lost the race and gave his hand friendly. Yes, you may be very fast, but the important thing is not how fast you are, but how carefully and consistently you do what you do. The rabbit was amazed by the turtle's resolution. From that day on, instead of bragging about being fast, he did everything he did, carefully and with determination. The Ugly Duckling There was a cute mother duck in a forest. Her eggs were her most valuable treasure. She was incubated with the love in her nest. One day, the eggs opened like a chest. From the eggs, cute ducklings emerged. But there was another egg that did not hatch. The mother duck 
patiently waited and waited. Finally, the egg cracked and chapped. From the egg hatched a duckling. But he was very different from his siblings. Mom, why am I not yellow like my siblings? Why is my feather gray? Because you are different, and that makes you a special duckling, honey. The ugly duckling didn't understand this answer. As he looked at his yellow siblings better, he felt even uglier. Whenever they swam in the lake together, he always felt different from the others. The ugly duckling wondered if there were other great ducks like him every day. Finally, furiously, he secretly left the lake and from his mother moved away. The ugly duckling walked day and night lonely. Finally, he came across a chicken family. He asked, Have you ever seen a duck family that looks like me? No! Chickens replied quickly, We've never seen a gray feathered duck like you. The ugly duckling has moved on sadly. Further away, he came across a pig family. He asked, Have you ever seen a duck family that looks like me? <laughs> oink, oink. No. Pigs replied quickly, We've never seen a gray feathered duck like you. <laughs> Even though he was tired, the ugly duckling kept walking. He came across a crow on a branch sleeping. He asked, Have you ever seen a duck family that looks like me? Gah, gah. No! Crow replied quickly, I've never seen a gray feathered duck like you. The duckling has lost all hope eventually. He looked everywhere but couldn't see any gray ducklings. That's why he felt even more ugly. By the lake, he hid himself in the trunk of a tree. I couldn't find anyone like me because I'm so ugly. I'm never leaving here. I will stay alone. <laughs> Months and seasons have passed finally. The duckling kept hiding secretly. Then, a spring day arrived cheerfully. A flock of swans landed on the water joyfully. The ugly duckling left his hiding place. How beautiful they are. I wish I were like them, he said, looking at the swans. Then he saw his reflection at a glance. His feathers were white as cotton. His neck was as long as a swan's. I am a swan, not an ugly duckling, he said excitedly. Welcome, said a swan gracefully. Realizing that he was a swan, the ugly duckling jumped into the water gladly. With a flock of beautiful swans, he swam happily. The mother duck and babies came to the lake right after. The ugly duckling showed his big wings and white feather. I understand what you mean now, he said to his mother because his real beauty was different from the others. The Three Little Pigs One day, three little pigs went to the forest. All three wanted to build beautiful houses. They all roamed around and gathered the necessary things. 
the little pig has built a straw house for himself. Pig brother said, This, this house, house is, is not, not solid, solid at, at all. all. The little pig didn't care at all. And closed his door with a bang. The middle pig built himself a wooden house. The eldest pig said, This house is not solid at all. The middle pig didn't care at all. And closed his door with a bang. The eldest pig built himself a brick house. He was very confident that his house was solid. So he sat down and stretched his legs. And nothing could spoil his enjoyment. Then a big bad wolf came. He was both very hungry and angry. The three little pigs were very scared when they saw the wolf. All three of them closed their doors with a bang. The three of them were frightened and hid inside. Hey, piggy, open the door and let me in, said the wolf. Nah, shouted the little pig. Then I'll huff and puff and blow your house down. My house is solid. You can't blow it down. Ooh and the straw house was destroyed. The little pig ran to his brother. Hey, piggies, open the door and let me in, said the wolf. Nuh-uh, shouted the middle pig. Then I'll huff and puff and blow your house down. My house is solid. You can't blow it down. And the wooden house was destroyed. The brothers ran to their older brother. Hey, piggies, open the door and let me in, said the wolf. Nuh uh uh, shouted the eldest pig. Hmm, then I'll huff and puff and blow your house down. My house is solid. You can't blow it down. <sighs> the brick house was not destroyed. The wolf tried again. <sighs> the brick house was still not destroyed. So the wolf thought for a moment and saw the chimney of the house. He climbed onto the roof and went through the chimney. The eldest pig realized that the wolf was coming. He immediately burned one of the woods. The chimney was now filled with smoke. The tail of the wolf was burned. Yow! Ow, 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 ow! The wolf just got away from there. The little pigs who built the straw and wooden house finally understood the importance of a solid house. They worked hard and built a brick house for themselves too. Even if the wolf huffed and puffed, their houses were no longer destroyed. <laughs> The big bad wolf, far from them, was so upset that he even cried. All three little pigs played freely in the forest, and without fear, they had fun. One morning, an old woman wanted to bake gingerbread. Apron on, the recipe ready, the flour is added, ginger is sprinkled. The old woman kneaded the dough gently. Finally, she shaped it into a man. Opened the oven and put the cookie. Sat and waited with excitement. Gingerbread man was baked perfectly. The kitchen smelled deliciously. The old woman opened the oven, took the tray and placed it on the counter. She added currants for his little eyes. 
a sweet cherry for the nose. As buttons, cherries were wise. For a smiling mouth, some cream she chose. At that moment, the gingerbread man was alive. Don't eat me! He shouted. And left the kitchen quickly. Even though the old woman followed him, the gingerbread man was so fast, ran away rapidly. Run if you want! Run after me! No one can catch me! Because I'm the gingerbread man! The gingerbread man ran and came to a farm. A cow was fascinated with his scent's charm. Moo! Wait! I'll eat you! He shouted from behind. Run if you want! Run after me! An old woman is already trying to catch me. But no one can catch me, because I'm the gingerbread man! The gingerbread man ran and ran. A pig smelled his sweet scent. Oink! Oink! Wait! I'll eat you! He shouted from the back. Run if you want! Run after me! An old woman and a cow are already trying to catch me. But no one can catch me, because I'm the gingerbread man! The gingerbread man ran and ran. A chicken smelled his sweet scent. Bok, bok, bok. Wait! I'll eat you! He shouted from the back. Run if you want! Run after me! An old woman, a cow, and a pig are already trying to catch me. But no one can catch me, because I'm the gingerbread man! The gingerbread man ran and came to the lakeside. He thought he would dissolve in water and disappear. A fox was fascinated with his sense charm. Jump on my head, I'll carry you! He shouted from behind. The gingerbread man jumped on the fox's head. The fox couldn't resist and opened his mouth wide. Ah! Uh... Just when the gingerbread man was about to become his bait, a crow saved him by holding him in the air. The gingerbread man asked the crow curiously. Do you eat gingerbread? I was wondering. When the crow opened his mouth and said, yes. The gingerbread man fell to the ground and escaped. Run if you want! Run after me! An old woman, a cow, a pig, a chicken, a fox, and a crow are already trying to catch me. But no one can catch me. Not even you. Because I'm the gingerbread man! There were seven little goats living in a cozy hut. The mother goat warned them before going to the market. Don't let strangers in. Shut the door tight. The cubs nodded and the mother went out. The wolf, who could not find food for a long time, smelled the seven little goats from quite afar. He knocked on their door and shouted, Open the door and let me in! The seven little goats were also very surprised. They immediately recognized the wolf's voice. You're not our mother! Your voice is too deep! So the wolf tried to move away to thin his voice. <coughs> How is this now? <coughs> How is this now? <coughs> there it is! The wolf was going to deceive the seven little goats. He knocked on their door. This time his voice was thin, just like the mother goat. 
Come on, my babies, let me in! The goats were happy to hear their mother had arrived. One of them wanted to open the door, but what was that? His feet were gray. The goat said, You're not our mother, her feet are white. The wolf failed again, but his stomach was still rumbling. This time, he ran to the bakery. He took a sack of flour and poured it on his feet. The wolf was going to deceive the seven little goats. He knocked on their door. This time, his voice was thin and his feet were white. The goats were deceived and opened the door for him. The wolf jumped on them, and the goats ran away. The first hid under the table, the second behind the curtain. The third jumped on the bed, the fourth jumped on the stove. The fifth went to the closet, the sixth to the kitchen, and the seven was inside the clock. Of course, the wolf wouldn't stop. He found the goats one by one. He took them to his lair. The mother goat has returned home. The door was open and no one was inside. The mother goat was very sad and cried. Hearing her voice, her baby came out of the clock. It turns out that he was the only one who could escape from the wolf. He told his mother what had happened. The mother goat wanted to save her babies. She immediately ran to the wolf's lair. Like a bear, her voice deepened and roared. I'm looking for a wolf to fill my stomach. The wolf was very scared when he heard the voice because he thought the mother goat was a bear. He left the goats and ran into the forest. He didn't even look back. The mother goat has finally had her babies. They all hugged each other and were so happy. The wolf could not deceive them again because the seven little goats were very clever. Little Red Riding Hood, one day, wanted to take jam and bread to her grandmother. Her mother allowed to do this, but she thought to warn her would be better. If a stranger on the road asks you, shall we eat cookies? What will be your answer? Yes! You will say no! No! Well done. So, what will you say if he asks you to come and eat ice cream together? Yes! No, you will say no! No! So, what will you say if he says, let me take you swimming? Sure! No, you will say no! No! You should always say no to people you don't know, okay? Let's try again. A stranger asks you, shall we eat cookies? And you say, no! What if he says, shall we eat ice cream? No! Shall we go swimming? Sure! No! You must say no! No! Well done. Immediately tell him to go away, okay? Go away! Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Well done. Little Red Riding Hood took her basket and set out. She walked in the forest and enjoyed the birds being loud. <laughs> A shadow passed behind her and the bushes shook. Even though she was a bit scared, she didn't care about. However, the hungry bad wolf was after her secretly. The wolf couldn't catch anything to eat eagerly. When he saw Little Red Riding Hood in the forest lonely, whoops, 
He appeared and wanted to swallow her immediately. Hey, little girl. Where are you going? First, Little Red Riding Hood was frightened. Then, without thinking, hurriedly she answered. To my grandmother. Take me to your grandmother, too. No way. You are a stranger. What if I give you cookies? No. What if I give you ice cream? No. So, does your grandmother live far from here? No! If you describe your grandmother's house, I'll take you swimming. What do you say? Oh, sure! My grandmother lives in the yellow house under the hazel tree. At that moment, gunshot was heard suddenly. The wolf ran away when he heard it immediately. Little Red Riding Hood continued on her way lonely. But before her, the wolf arrived at the house quickly. Turns out, Grandma wasn't home expectedly. To buy some food, she went to the dairy. The hungry wolf took this as an opportunity. And he dressed like Grandma and got into bed eagerly. Little Red Riding Hood arrived there finally. She knocked on the door excitedly. The door opened rapidly. It was dark inside, extremely. Grandma, I brought you delicious jam! Bring him to me so I can eat, my child. Little Red Riding Hood to pass the jam and bread, she came closer and approached the bed. Since her grandmother looked a little strange, Little Red Riding Hood thought she was feeling bad. Grandma, why are your eyes so big? To see you better, my child. But why are your ears so long? To hear you better. Your teeth, Grandma. Why are your teeth so sharp? To be able to eat you better! The wolf jumped on Little Red Riding Hood. He was going to put her in his mouth! While the poor girl was running around... Help! Help me! The wolf will catch me! She shouted out loud. Just then, the door opened and the hunter entered suddenly. When he saw the hunter, the wolf ran out quickly. Thus, he received his punishment from the hunter easily. Little Red Riding Hood was safe now with her grandmother. She was eating jam and bread in the kitchen. Her mother joined them a little bit later, and she reminded her what should never be forgotten. If a stranger asks you on the road, shall we go swimming? How would you answer? Yeah. Huh? No! Well done. You should always say no to people you don't know, okay? No, no, go away! Go, go, go! <laughs> <laughs> Goldilocks and the Three Bears There was a little girl named Goldilocks. She had golden blonde, very curly locks. She got lost on the way when she followed a butterfly. She moved away from home. Where? Who knows? Goldilocks got lost in the forest. She saw a small hut among the trees. She knocked on the door three times. Knock, knock, knock. The door opened with a squeak. Is anyone there? Even though the hut was empty, she saw three plates suddenly, with porridge filled in all three. Goldilocks was very hungry. She tasted them all in a hurry. Ow, ow, ow! This porridge is so hot! Purr, purr, purr! This porridge is so cold! Yum, yum, yum! This porridge is perfect for me! Goldilocks ate the porridge and finished it well. 
When she got tired, she rested for a spell. Aya! This chair is too wide! Bleh. This chair is too narrow! Ooh! This chair is perfect for me! Just then, the chair broke! Ouch! Goldilocks fell to the ground. Then it hurt, and she cried. Boo! She wanted to find a bed and sleep quietly. One large, one medium, one tiny. There were three beds in the room. Goldilocks wanted to try them curiously. Uh-uh! This bed is too hard! Ay yay! This bed is too soft! Ooh! This bed is perfect for me! Goldilocks closed her eyes and fell asleep. That's when the owners of the house came. They had big hands. Their feet were insane. Their thick brown fur seemed majestically because they were the bear family. They sat around the table. As soon as they entered, they looked at their plates and were bewildered. Someone tasted my porridge. Someone tasted my porridge too. <laughs> Someone ate my porridge and finished it! The bear family thought someone was there. They walked into the living room with plenty of care. Someone sat on my chair! Someone sat on my chair too! Someone broke my chair! <laughs> this time the bear family went to the bedroom. The pillows were not how they left them in the room. Someone slept on my bed! Someone slept on my bed, too! Someone... Someone... Someone is sleeping in my bed! All three bears growled by the bed angrily. Goldilocks opened her eyes suddenly when she saw big bears in front of her. She jumped out of bed and ran home immediately. Father Bear fixed the broken chairs. Mother Bear put porridge into the empty plates. Baby Bear made the beds. Never again saw each other, Goldilocks and the three bears.